angekommen in Baden bei Wien für das Lagassi Baden Foto Festival 2023. Hier sind jetzt die Medientage übers Wochenende, das heißt, dass viele Fotografinnen und Fotografen extra hier nach Baden anreisen, um über ihre Bilder zu sprechen, es wird Vorträge geben und Kai und ich werden die Chance haben, ganz viele Interviews zu führen, die wir euch dann in den nächsten Monaten vermutlich über den Gate 7 Podcast auch ausspielen werden. Link zum Gate 7 Podcast findet ihr unten in der Videobeschreibung und ich treffe mich jetzt auf dem Espresso mit den ersten, die angekommen sind. Quite unfit, as you know. It's tiring. At the end, there is a table waiting with fish and dumplings and wine, and um, hopefully a very comfortable temperature to spend the night together, spend an evening together in the spirit of photography. And I welcome you here in Baden with all I have in my heart. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. The examples you mentioned, uh, what they all have in common is their unique vision of the photographer behind mm -hmm. the lens. So it's, uh, I think, very one of the important points if you want to become a, um, um, a successful photographer, that you have that kind of unique vision. I mean, we can all take up a camera, take up our phone, take a picture of something. But if there's no vision behind or no idea behind the image and why you take an image of something and how you put things together, I think there's something missing. Um, well, going from there, what do you think also at the school in your teachings, what is it that you try to communicate to your students uh, what they have to learn in order to really get to uh, develop their own mm. vision yeah that's a that's also a good question and and uh, also one thing that is i think somehow almost impossible to to somehow answer because it's like uh, how do you um, how do you train creativity how do you train uh, Uh, a photographic vision um, and I think that one of the things that, that we do is that I think we do it a little bit opposite that many other schools because many other schools uh, to my knowledge at least they train um, they train how a picture should look like so that means that 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 they train like now you have to now you have to shoot something and it has to be in the in the golden section and now you have to shoot with a, a little depth of field and now you have to have to shoot with a long shutter speed because it's sport and so so often as many photography schools have this idea that that it's that it's a technical training that you are that you're taught like now you have to do this and this and this then you'll become a good photographer and basically we go the other way around We 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 uh, we ask our students 
So what is what is the story that you would like to tell? What is the the what is the purpose? Why are you going to tell this story? And then we ask them. So how can you do that? So basically, the 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 technical training, the training about how the camera function and uh, what you can do with shutter speed, all this kind of just comes on the way. But so if a, if a student uh, tells me that. Um, that I want to photograph this and it has to be shot with a, with a mobile phone because of this and this reason, I would never say, but this you can't do because you have to have a, you have to have a zoom lens and you have to be able to change and you have to be able to change the, the aperture and stuff like that. But if, if it works for the story, then, then it makes sense. Um, and I think that's uh, I think that's that's one of the things that that we benefit from is that we all the time put the the story, the idea, the why you want to tell the story, the what it is that is the what is the story really about? Not that this is an interesting story about a fisherman, but what is it really about? What is it that this fisherman can represent, and how can you show that in the, your images? This is this is what we always ask the students, and if um, and when we have done that, then we talk about photography. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I think for us it's um, uh, it's it's a matter of, of of turning it around. And then of course you can't you can't make photography without knowing about photography. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we have a, a huge list of inspiration, and we discuss. The, the different um, uh, ways of, of addressing the story. But we also look at a lot of different other ways of story making. Uh, you mentioned yourself that the artists, filmmaking, stuff like that. And, and we share with the students other p ways of, of storytelling. It could also be uh, novels or, or, um, or writers. How do they create a scene how do they uh, describe a person if you if you read something and and the, and the writer describes a person with words can you can you actually take those words and put them into an image so that you that you get that vision in your head when you see the image and i think maybe for instance with um, with uh, uh, elisa that this is maybe why her portraits were so interesting because it was almost like reading a, a, a novel where she described the person and his his or her thoughts. Um, so I think that a lot of inspiration is quite important for photography, so mm -hmm. that we are not limiting ourselves to look at photography as only photography. And was it um, difficult to find the the women? Uh, in Afghanistan, when you when you did the shoot, or did you did you had to f fight for, for for the images, or was it easy to find? Yeah, we can find? say. Well, I mean, the thing is that when you talk about the conflict zone like Afghanistan, um, it is not easy to just uh, choose a subject or choose a, as an issue that the men of that country have problem with. You know, I mean, as you see today from Taliban, I mean. I cannot say we have the same during Republic, but the thing is that uh, we had still like some restrictions and it was not easy for me to go through the life of typical Afghan women and to capture them. So that's why I went through the life of women musicians, women artists, women activists, women actresses, filmmakers, because I knew that uh, maybe as they were familiar with the camera and all these things, they, they, they gave me the permission to even publish their photos. But despite all everything that uh, I had, all these challenges, uh, again, I mean, I remember I got, I used to get a call from a brother, from a husband, and some crazy messages. That's how we dare you to share these pictures, or even some uh, extremist, uh, I can say, in a patriarchal society. They even couldn't see that you cover a woman with burqa and cigarette, or in the middle of a street with electric guitar. So. Uh, even 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 if it's in the western look a very crazy cliche photos but uh, i really fight and i really struggled and i suffered even for those little 
uh, freedom signs in my photos. I mean, I can say to you that I remember in one of these uh, shoots that you see the woman with the taxi, uh, it was a huge traffic behind me and everybody were just like going around and to just understand what a woman with a camera is doing there and why you are shooting, photo shooting a woman inside the, the car. So even the, the process of the shoot took kind of four hours for me to control the situation, to just say that these people like, guys, I'm just taking photos, <laughs> leave me alone for one moment, you know. So, but I mean, um, yeah, in that society... Even before the Taliban, it was not easy to, to face kind of things. Zeit für einen kleinen Blick hinter die Kulissen. Wir sind jetzt gerade zwischen zwei Podcast-Interviews und ich bin mal eben schnell zum Bäcker geflitzt, ein bisschen was zu essen zu holen. Gute Gelegenheit aber auch mal darüber zu sprechen, was ich hier gerade teste, nämlich das Tamron 1120mm F28. Hat mir Tamron netterweise zur Verfügung gestellt. Ich habe es schon bei ein paar Reportagen dabei gehabt. Ich habe es auf Hochzeiten getestet. Ich habe es ähm, in freien Reportagen getestet, auf Filmshoots und einfach so in meiner Freizeit auch. Was ich unbedingt noch testen wollte, ist das Vloggen mit dem Objektiv, weil da habe ich tatsächlich große Hoffnung dafür. Und ich finde es sehr cool zum Filmen, das Objektiv. Ich habe die ganzen Behind-the-Scenes-Aufnahmen hier jetzt in Baden mit dem Objektiv gemacht. Und muss wirklich sagen, das Objektiv ist gut gemacht, äh, macht scharfe Bilder, klar, es macht tolle Videos. Der Brennweitenbereich von 11 bis 20 mm ist auf jeden Fall genau das, was mir in meinem Objektivpark fehlt, weswegen ich dieses Objektiv sehr wahrscheinlich kaufen muss, ähm, wenn das wirklich gut gefällt und es auch eine Lücke in meinem äh, Line-Up an Objektiven füllt, die ich bisher irgendwie nicht gefüllt bekommen habe. Das andere Tamron Objektiv war zwar auch super, aber es war einfach nur eine Doppelung zu anderen Objektiven, die ich schon habe. Das 11, 20 mm hingegen, das ist schon eher was für mich. Ich denke, das muss ich mir eins holen. You won so many awards, 13 World Press Photo Awards and several others. Uh, what do these awards mean to you and how, well, it's one way to measure success of your work, but sure. do you have any other measures of success that are more on a personal level maybe? Yes, absolutely. Look, awards are confusing, yeah. Um, just remember, I'm 54 years old. I've been doing this for a long yeah. time. So, yes, I've won a lot of stuff, but I've won it over the course of 30 years. So <laughs> I'm not some sort of prolific award winner. It's just I've just been doing this for a long time. Um, you need to be careful of awards because you begin to have pressure to win more. You, there's a sense of expectation to win more. And that can be... You need to be careful because that can affect the direction that you're thinking and it can you can find yourself subscribing to a pressure that you don't necessarily need to feel, you know. Um, the best thing with awards is that it helps to give your work a second life. Um, I, the, really, um, that's been really good because people might, you know, you publish something and a week later it's gone. You know, people forget about it or it maybe it lingers in the minds of people but they forget about it. Awards season comes around and you win, that piece lives again. And often it can mean that it'll get published again. You know, so you go to World Press, you go to POI, you go to whatever it is, um, Visa, etc. cetera, um, and you'll meet someone and they might want to publish that piece again. Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's a phenomenal piece. But another aspect of awards is that it forces you to go through your work at the end of every year. And that's a good exercise. You know, because you, you're editing your thinking process. You're, you're looking at what did I actually do this year? What might I do better next year? Um, you're also really forced to confront um, whether you're doing good work or not. And to be honest about it, you know, a lot of what I do is shit. It's really not good, you know. Um, and when you go through that editing process every year, you are in a process of refinement. And I think whether you, whatever profession you do, you should have an audit of your efforts every year. And that's really what awards are for photographers. It's, a, it's an audit of what you did that year, you know. So, um, yeah, it's an opportunity to grow. Um, you know, it also, I'd be, I'd be lying if I'd said that it didn't, um, didn't matter to publications. It does matter. Um, you know, it keeps you in the mind of editors. And that's, that's like any career that matters. Um, But yeah, you do, you do have to be careful um, of not having, uh, of not subscribing to the pressure to win. Yeah, that, that is a reality. Um, I think people like the New York Times, et cetera, feel that more, the agencies feel it more in terms of the Pulitzers. Um, but that is in the thinking of, you know, because it's a direct manifestation of success. 
you know, and people want those benchmarks. You know, it's an affirmation, it's, it's a business success, etc. But the vast majority of photojournalists that I meet that I think are really good at their jobs, that's certainly not their primary motivation. It's a byproduct mm -hmm. of their efforts, but it's not their primary motivation. But it does help keep you in the field. Yeah. And you, that's just a reality, mm -hmm. you know. And what are your personal benchmarks for success? Our personal benchmarks are the respect of, of my peers. You know, like I'm fortunate to know some of the, what I think are the greatest photojournalists of our time and the ability to be friends with those people and have them treat me with respect means more than anything. I'll give back anything I ever won for that. Thank you, you know. Um, you know, I, I won a National Geographic's Photographer, Photographer's Photographer Award. I think that was in 2016. And that's an award where the photographers of the magazine vote on who they think is the guy that, that you know, the, the man or the woman who they felt um, did the best work that year. That sort of thing is very valuable. And that's not a public award, et cetera, but that is, you know, the respect of your peers and the ability to have um, dialogue on, a, on an equal footing with people that are legends in your mind. You know, that's amazing. You know, like I had a, I had an experience with Jim Nachtway a couple of years ago in France where he had a major retrospective. And I don't know him very well, but he knew my work. And that blew me away. That blew me away, you know, um, because he was, he, he was important to me. So, um, yes, I will give back everything I ever won for those five minutes of, of seeing you from someone who you respect at that But, level. Um, uh, it, again, it has something to do with uh, how I started photography and how I approached art in the beginning. Because again, I went through theater, I went through films, and uh, only that I went to photography. And um, in the beginning, when I was making um, photography, I was very personal. So I was talking about myself and about my feelings. And uh, when I went on and on the second year of school, we had this um, approach to the documentary photography. So that's where I sort of switched. And I thought that uh, and at some point you can't talk about yourself anymore <laughs> because I mean, unless there's something in there or I mean, there are many good photographers who do it, but the, that was just not for me. And uh, but still by speaking about other people i feel that i somehow speak about myself and or at least about things that i that i don't um maybe fully understand in the beginning or something that i would like to uh come closer to something that becomes me that something that helps me to understand more about the world i live in something that connects me to different people something that um, I don't know. It's just um, it's interesting because, uh, like doing photography and art in general, it's uh, about it, it. It's an it, it's a relationship with your mind as well, like with something that interests your mind, and you don't uh, you don't always know why it is that. So sometimes it's just subconscious. And uh, in the topic of migration, for example, because. Uh, It's been um, five years that I'm working on this project about African migration in Europe. And um, I asked myself a lot of times, what is that that attracts me? And uh, I actually think that uh, the way uh, migration and the story of migration is the ultimate thing about the human being, like it's the ultimate state of human beings. And uh, that's the way I try to present it in my project like migration as the primordial state of the human beings that uh, want to move forward and want to explore things, want to evolve and contribute to different cultures and blend with different cultures. So um, I think, uh, right, when I, was, uh, when I was trying to find like what's actually, what is, um, um, what is my main interest in photography and i came to this reflection that it's actually about the universal themes just that that that's through photography i try to get to the core of how the world works and functions and um and that's what i find fascinating about it because photography gives you this opportunity <laughs>
sehr lange Nacht der Fotografie auf dem Lagassi Baden Foto Festival ist vorbei. Die Nacht war sehr lang, wie Lois Lammerhuber schon angekündigt hat, aber es hat sich auch wieder wirklich gelohnt. Es gab unglaublich interessante Vorträge von George Steinmetz, Brent Sturton, eine Panel-Diskussion mit vier Fotografen, dann unter anderem Fatima Husseini. Die Bilder seht ihr hier im Hintergrund. Es ging noch bis spät in die Nacht, auch an der Hotelbar. Unglaublich viele tolle Gespräche, ähm, Mitschnitte von den Diskussionen oder zumindest Zusammenfassungen werden Kai und ich euch sicherlich bei Abenteuer Reportagefotografie geben, wer das noch nicht kennt, und in die Beschreibung reinschauen. Da verlinke ich es auf jeden Fall. Und ich habe mich jetzt hier morgens aufgemacht, um nochmal in Ruhe durch die Ausstellung zu gehen. Da ich jetzt ähm, die ersten Tage wirklich sehr beschäftigt war, dachte ich mir, ich nutze den letzten Morgen hier nochmal nach dem ersten Kaffee, um mir in Ruhe ein paar von den Bildern anzuschauen. Falls ihr irgendwie in die Nähe kommt oder wirklich Bock drauf habt, hier wirklich extra dafür herzureisen, es lohnt sich. Schaut euch die Ausstellung hier in Baden bei Wien an. Es ist eine großartige Ausstellung, ist die größte ihrer Art auch in Europa mit unglaublich interessanten, spannenden Bildern, spannenden Geschichten. Lohnt sich wirklich, hierher zu kommen. Musik